She's almost an adult. She might bite me right here. She's gonna nip me sometimes. She's in Bermation. I really shouldn't be handling her, but for the video's sake, I will. She's got two foot. So what I... She's gonna poop. She's pooped in here. I'm gonna poop that in a second. Sorry. But, um... Yeah, so... With any, go with any kind of North American bluebird, ball python, boa, Brazilian rainbow boa, anything that roommates, which is the majority of reptiles, because... Pretty much any any country of the world, any climate, there's going to be a cold time during the winter, the colder than their natural temperatures, so they're going to go into some sort of formation. Formation is a, is different than hibernation. Being the hibernation, they burrow down, an animal would burrow down, and just get into a deep sleep for the winter. Formation, they're not they don't sleep. Well, they do, but they're not. They just become real sluggish. She's not really doing a good example of that. But she, they just kind of hang out. They don't really do much. They don't eat, they'll drink water, but they just don't really do a lot. In, in the wild, that's that's enough one. They go way down in the burrows or whatever, only come out to drink. And she's gonna bite right here. I have to go now for check. Anyway, so brumating, you don't, really, you don't need to do anything. Even indoors, a lot of the animals that do brumate will automatically brumate when it's time. Sorry for all the sounds, we have two pawns here. They will automatically just do some sort of a couple weeks or something, and it's it's healthy for them. It's good to give them the rest. It's not going to shorten the lifespan or anything. But yeah, she's real nippy right now. Yeah. So, so you just need to they'll just automatically do it, especially with me being that I have, I'm keeping her in my garage right now. This is not her permanent enclosure by any means. She'll have like a 20 gallon long or something when she comes out of formation. This I put in here. That's another thing on it to talk on. If you're brewing them outdoors, and if you have an outdoor enclosure, you can't bring them inside for some reason. Then you're gonna. Then I recommend something well insulated, like an ice chest, a styrofoam ice chest, something that's well insulated. So if it's 40 degrees, then it drops down to 25 really quick. That, that could put an animal in shock and possibly kill it. Especially if it's older, then it can shorten the lifespan because it's a lot on the animal. So if you do, so if you put them in something like this. Normal little ice chest, it's even broken, you know, we never really use it. Just set them in there. It's obviously, snake proof, it's like almost airtight and stuff. She'll still get her air and stuff, so open it never about once a day or so to check on her. Having, it, and having no problems with that, they automatically will stop feeding. Don't stop feeding them. If they still take food, definitely feed it to them. I've lost a snake, I've lost snakes before like that, where they just stop feeding them during duration. So still occasionally offer them food. About springtime or so, like in nature, they will come out of it. So that's about it. You know, tank size doesn't really matter to me, but they're not going to be doing much. This is about the equivalent to like a five gallon tank or so. There she is, a little female valley garter snake, wild caught. I mean, you probably get like a bull snake, corn snakes, stuff like that, keeping them outdoors. Her, though. I don't want to stress her out, but yeah, that's about it. Great comment, subscribe.